Elevation levels by each state. So as the surface elevation goes up to 2000, we can slowly see the higher parts of the US, which is obviously going to be more kind of here. They got a lot of mountains and hills over this way. They also got the Rockies. Now wait for it to shoot up. We still haven't reached a lot of these areas in Colorado. We're at 8,000 feet. We're getting to 10,000 feet. Finally getting somewhere around there. There's actually some other dots that we haven't reached just yet. It's hard to tell by looking at this map up here, but by looking at the bar graph, there's Washington, Colorado and California all basically tied for first place. Their top peak is almost 14,000 feet. This is a really unique way to show different elevation levels. I've never seen something like this before. Look how low most of the country is. Like it's very flat. This is all 2,000 feet. Everything like from the east here is just looks like a tsunami could just roll through this whole area. Okay, probably shouldn't say that. Now keep in mind that was only of the lower 48. Technically California has the 11th tallest mountain in the United States. And then literally the other top 10 is all from Alaska. That is how scary and massive Alaska is. This is the tallest point and that rises up to 20,000 feet. It's actually the highest mountain in North America as a whole, just the whole continent. Three months of walking in a brand new city as tracked by my phone. I really love the end of that statement, as tracked by my phone. Damn, they really know where we all at, huh? This dude really looks like he traveled down every single nook and cranny. I'd want to do this one day. This is just walking, by the way. It'd probably help a lot more if you had like a bike. Road oofs per million. The EU can Compared to the United States, it should come as no surprise that most of Europe is a pretty safe place to drive. There's probably a lot of rural areas, but the train is maybe more explored. There's more history, more chances to put down roads. You got the Romans and everything. The only places where it gets a little crazy is Romania and Bulgaria. But now let's come on down to the United States and wow, what are we doing? This gray color is the highest point. 160 people are not living per million. Wyoming takes the cake though, which is understandable. Wyoming is really not populated. I think it entirely has to do with like how developed these places are. But then again, that doesn't really explain a lot of the deep south though. Also doesn't explain Alaska either. Maybe everyone's driving very slow in Alaska because it's so cold and scary. Then there's like these flat states. What are you doing in the flat states? Nebraska, Kansas? Like it's understandable if you're driving like near a cliff and you fall off. There's probably a lot of things that are contributing to this that I'm not even considering. GDP per capita across the world. This isn't the biggest GDP country. This is per capita and the number one by far is Luxembourg. Chances are if you live in this tiny little place in Europe, you make and bank. Then Norway is second, led by Ireland and then Switzerland. There's a huge drop off, but then we have Denmark and then finally a non-European nation, Qatar. The different colors on the bars, by the way, represent different continents. Europe is just dominating the per capita category. The US barely ranks in at number 10, although it's very close between Sweden, Australia, Singapore. I actually thought like Canada would have a speed, but I guess not. Then the further we scroll down, the worse it is going to get. Here's the world average right down here and then everything Thing before this is uh, it's rough. The absolute worst place to be though is well I think a lot of these would not be the greatest. These three in particular. I mean a lot of these places are tied. It's hard to say like there's just a worse one. The entry level job at Mirage, a new analysis from LinkedIn job listings. This shows entry level positions often demand years of prior experience. So basically anything that is requiring three years of experience, 60% of software and IT services are going to ask for three years of experience. How is retail going to be the lowest on this list, but still 8.2%? Maybe these are like managerial positions. That's the only thing I can think of. Crazy that half of all of manufacturing also require this. Not even healthcare? You'd think that'd be higher up. I don't know, this is really confusing. The No No Afghans new arsenal. Apparently they have 22,000 Humvees, 8,000 trucks, 634, whatever the hell that is. Looks like a tank. No, oh, no, they have tanks, 169 of them. How many radios do you really need? Night vision goggles, assault, holy crap. All right, this is actually a little scary. They got planes too? All right, this is concerning. 33 helicopters. They don't have a whole lot of planes, but it's still, they're in the air. Look at this defense thing they have too. Holy crap, that brings everything into perspective. This post goes along nicely with that previous one too. This is what $10,000 looks like in $100 bills. Here's what $1 million looks like in $100 bills. That actually looks not that nice. I've seen that in movies where like it doesn't look like that much. They always like try to stack up a suitcase full of cash. Looks like nothing. Here's a hundred million in $100 bills. That feels like what a million should look like. 100 billion in $100 bills. And finally, this is one trillion. Holy 
holy shit. So two of those was spent in the no no stand land. Like this is one, but there was two trillion dollars spent there, so. Okay. How much does one gigabyte of data cost across the world? So this is comparing the price of one gig data in various selected countries. So basically in Israel, they have high smartphone penetration with nearly 75% of people having this device. So it only costs about 0 0.05. Then there's India, one of the cheapest in the world due to hyper competitive state of telecos. All the smartphone companies are competing for India right now. The global average, by the way, is $6.89 per gig. So a lot of these places are still pretty cheap. In the US, it costs about $3.33 per gig. Then it starts to get really crazy. We're above the national average. The UAE, Greece, the Cayman Islands. Finally, by far, number one is Equatorial Guinea. I'm sure all of you guys were thinking, oh, it's got to be Equatorial Guinea at number one. Well, yep, you were right. And they pay about $50 per one gig. One gig. That is insane. Small customer base and lack of competition have caused data rates to skyrocket to the highest global. I just want to know how it's so expensive compared to everywhere else. Like, this is crazy. Wavelengths as shown by Queen Elizabeth. I don't know nothing about no wavelengths, but now that she's teaching me, you definitely have my attention. She just is in some bright colors now that I think about it. So red is, uh, I don't know, whatever these numbers are supposed to represent. The wavelengths themselves are also very long and, I don't know, curvy. And as you go from red, red to orange to yellow and green seems to be like a nice middle ground but it's actually blue and especially purple where wavelengths get crazy so this has something to do with light and reflection right Damn, I don't even know. Well, thanks, Queen. I'm glad she's been able to show humans for millions of years. There's actually a whole color theory that goes on that you can dive into, but it gets really confusing, as long as you know the primary colors, right? I actually find this really useful. The only thing I really know is complementary colors. Like, find out which colors are opposite, and then use those colors for everything. It just looks nicer. Blue and yellow is, like, my favorite. There's the whole idea that color intensity changes in relation to its surrounding color. This is all the same red, but when you put it up against this purple, ugh, it looks gross. Red and white looks good, though. Which is the nearest sea slash ocean for the United States. Obviously, it's easy to figure out when it comes to these coastal places. I would have kind of forgotten the Gulf of Mexico, though, since we're including that. The biggest surprise, though, is the Gulf of California. We never talk about that. I talk about Baja, California, and how that should rightfully be ours in, in my state. But the Gulf of California reaches all the way. That is the closest for Colorado, even parts of Wyoming. Actually, South Dakota, this small edge, if they want to get to the nearest body of water, they got to go down here to Mexico. That doesn't even feel right. You would think they just have to go to the Pacific Ocean. There's also the Hudson Bay, which I thought would be making a bigger impact for some of these Midwestern states. Obviously, Hawaii is surrounded by just the Pacific Ocean, but look at weird Alaska. I thought Pacific Ocean would be taking that over too, but no, it's the Burying Sea and then the Arctic Ocean in the north. South Dakota takes the cake though. This is a very confusing place. How serious do EU countries think climate change is? Weird that red is actually going to be good. I never see that usually. It's going to be kind of confusing. 80% or more of the population believe it's very serious. Green is actually going to be bad. Believe that it's not not very serious. It's 59% or less. That's still half of the population. It could be at least. So most of Western Europe believe that, yeah, it's kind of a big deal. Even Greece and actually Hungary. I'm surprised that Hungary's on that side. The Portuguese population, though, are leading the charge. 91% of them believe it's a big deal. Finland kind of chilling because, you know, Finland's like frozen all the time, so I get that. You probably don't notice much of a difference. Latvia has the lowest people that care, though, at 59. Again, so it is over half. Now, I want to see the same thing with the U.S. That would be interesting. Like how the U.K. is displayed is already underwater. Electricity generation by source. So what do these countries use more often? Nuclear, renewables, or fossil fuels? So if I'm reading this correctly, Norway is the only place that is running off of 100% either nuclear or renewables. We have France, who's barely running off of any renewables. They're all the way over here. Sweden, Canada, and Brazil are some outliers. Wow, Brazil is doing pretty good. And then we just have this huge stack, everyone over this way, mostly renewables or fossil fuels is what they're using. Look at Saudi Arabia. Holy crap. Oh, oh, I think Norway's actually running off of just renewables. That's what this is trying to show. No one's really doing nuclear, 100% at least. Yeah, this state is not quite as beautiful. I'd be confused with this stuff. The male to female ratio of the Olympics. Starting in 1896, there were no females. They tried it a little bit in the 1900s and then they were like, no, maybe not. But then it started popping back up again. You would think that like in 1948, there'd be a lot of ladies because like a lot of the men didn't make it out of 
WW2. There's like a weird gap in the Olympics because of that whole thing. Then the 50s rolls around and it starts to get kind of consistent, but there's progress being made. And then every single Olympics, there becomes more and more. Now, there's been a little bit of a slow, but that is because we've reached the point of about 50%, or at least they were getting close to 50% as of 2016, too. So it's really strange to me that they wouldn't just always have done the Olympics at 50-50. The chemistry of the different colors of blood. There are different colors of blood. Red, humans, and the majority of other... Oh, oh, yeah. I thought we all had all these different colors and they weren't telling us. I've never bled green blood before, minus a couple of weird scenarios I got myself into. Spiders, crustaceans, squids, octopus, they have blue blood. I'm guessing mostly uh, worms and any aliens have green. I've never seen a worm bleed green blood, and I've, like, ripped apart a lot. Finally, there's violet, which a lot of other worms, like, a lot of weird stuff have. A lot of weird. PP worms. I've never heard of that. Without trees, we have a very hot neighborhood. The road itself is gonna be 50 degrees Celsius. What is that, like, 100 in American units? But with trees, it can make a world difference. Temperature can drop down by half. Plus, who wants to walk down a, like, a treeless street? This looks boring. This looks like a magical wonderland. Riches, fictional character of all time. I wanna know how they calculated this. I'm just gonna create a character that has 500 trillion dollars. Jay Gatsby, only here at a billion. Then we have Lady Mary Crawley, Mr. Monopoly. He's a fictional character. How do we know how much Mr. Monopoly has? Is that lore really necessary? Laura Croft is rich? Bruce Wayne's got 10 billion. I guess he would need to have a lot of money for all the shit he does. Richie Rich, or me in another life. I knew this kid that would call me Richie Rich every day in middle school. How does Tony Stark have more than Bruce Wayne? Daddy Warbucks? Then there's Smog from The Hobbit. It, whoever the hell this guy is, and Scrooge McDuck, 65 billion. This was weird. I don't believe this at all. I want to know where these numbers came from. Where is Jeff Bezos on the list, too? Scrooge McDuck has a whole, like, room filled, like a warehouse full of gold coins. Pretty sure he's, like, a trillionaire. Primetime actors, or actors during their glory days, their highest and least highest rated movie. Robert De Niro's primetime, according to IMDb ratings, was 1973 to 1976. His lowest rated movie is Sam Song, but you can really forgive him for this just get into his industry. Of course, Godfather really bringing it up there. But De Niro's had a long life. He's still going on. It's pretty strong. Interesting how strong Al Pacino started. He's had 52 film appearances. He was going good. Morgan Freeman has been really consistent. On average, he's, he's pulling out a lot of, like, sevens. That's pretty good for IMDb. He's actually insanely consistent. Michael Caine's all over the place. Oh, I forgot he was in Jaws, The Revenge. Should be looking at award wins and nominations, too. How often does this correlate to IMDb ratings? My boy Leo, though. Man, that dude only does good stuff. I mean, there was Critters 3 and then he said, never again. I don't even know what this is, but 5.5 is why I <laughs> love Leonardo DiCaprio. Samuel L. Jackson, motherfucker. <laughs> that dude just does a little bit of everything. He does not care, and I like that. Who cares? Just take those roles, baby. Look at Liam Neeson's career spike somewhere around like 2004, and he just never really stopped making movies. He's like only been acting. He has no free time anymore. Harrison Ford, lowest rating is 5.2. That is crazy good. Is that the best? That is the best. Oh, besides Francis McDormand. Damn, Judy Dench. Okay, that was interesting. The top 30 universities that use the most green energy as percentage of their total power use. Number one is Georgetown University. A lot of these place in the Northeast. I mean, this is like a really big university area in general. I figured there'd be a lot of packed in there. All these fancy schools that I've never really heard of. St. Louis University. I'm gonna sound dumb, but I've never heard of Mellon University. A lot of these places are either at 100% or over 100%. Don't some, like, uh, feedback to the community, they'll, like, give extra energy if they can, it's like nearby shops and stuff. Arizona State doing pretty good with all these really high-class schools up here. Well, Arizona State is the middle of the desert, so they just have, like, price solar panels everywhere. University of California has a lot of power use. They have a long way to go. Millionaire migration, or the wealth exodus from China, continues. It's Australia and the U.S. that are gaining big. The U.S. saw an extra 10,000 millionaires move here, mostly to New York, Los Angeles, Miami, San Francisco, whereas a lot of millionaires are moving out of Brazil. They lost 2,000. India, 5,000. Russia with 4,000 and then the most 15,000 out of China. Overall, this country is still creating more millionaires than it's losing, though. So you make your millions and then you get out, I guess is what they're going to do. France and the UK have even lost a lot. They're going to Switzerland. Is it for the chocolate or some hidden bank accounts? Australia gained more than us for the fourth year in a row. Australia beat out the US as the top destination for migrating 
What does this mean? Millionaires. There's a 14% rise too, so it's only gonna keep happening. Maybe I'm sure COVID changes that. The complete guide to pairing candy with wine, beer, and booze. Let's go. If you're going with candy corn, these are your options. Oh, I love Smarties. Smarties and vodka? I don't know if I trust some of these. I'm getting a little worried. Licorice and gin or champagne. I mean, I'm down to do it for science. Do all of it for science. Skittles and light rum. I can see Tootsie Rolls and Jack being okay. This is weird. All right, I need to get on these experiments. Now let's consider this, which will show us which US state is gonna do which one of those candy combinations. New Hampshire is enjoying this the most. They are at number one. It's mostly a lot of these northern states. Is there a correlation with the northern states? North Dakota and then Montana? For wine, number one is Idaho. Oh, New Hampshire just likes their stuff in general. New Hampshire, wild out here. DC also pretty good. DC is number two. A lot of places in the south don't enjoy wine. New Hampshire, number one for spirit. Okay, someone's got to check on New Hampshire. Give me your keys, New Hampshire. I don't trust you anymore. Delaware 2, DC also up there. I'm seeing like a repeating pattern with some of these places. And yeah, just total, we already know that that was going to be the case. This is a whole new thing that I'm learning about these places. Nevada's number four overall. Then it's Delaware and DC. Surprised that Florida's not doing more. They wild over here. That means that they're just doing that sober. That's a whole nother level of scary, all the wild things I hear from them. Because this would have explained it a bit. It's like, oh, okay, I get why you're like eating faces, but you don't even have this to use as an excuse. North Dakota, pretty cold all the time. So I think there's a correlation between like cold weather and this because you have nothing to do. You have to stay inside. Combine this and candy, apparently. And thank you to the patrons. Drew is a sussy bucka. Changed my mind. I'm about a nut. Drew's Argentinian grandpa. Luxembourg lover. Poppy Drew. Woo. A Polish Wyoming 2021. Aaron F. Aryan after hours. Alfonso M6. Bornski W. Bring back Poland Bowl. Dalton D. Elijah Senpai. Full Hawks, Hawks, Hawks. Mine Brothers 99 X2. Multiplayer sign. Peter T. Popcorn 2008. Nick Blore. Stormtrooper 501. Patrick C. Thank you.